the power of prayer. Good morning and welcome to the Chapel of Christ Triumphant. Those in person, it's great to see everyone here, even though we're in mass, and thank you for doing that. To those online, including my mom in Indiana, hi mom, I hope you found the link. Welcome to our live stream. Students, let me tell you a little secret. Being a parent can be tough. We worry about our kids. We worry about every aspect of their life. Did they get on the bus? Did they sit with someone at lunch? Do they have friends? What are their friends like? Do they do bad things? What are these friends' parents like? I'm not sure exactly what bad things mean, but I think we worry about that. This does not end when you go to college. I've heard stories of parents knowing an employee and checking in on a student here and there, maybe snapping a picture, sending it to a parent, just to let them know that, yes, your child's okay. This is all done out of love of a parent. Parents learn that love for their child is strong, really strong, and we'll talk about that a little bit more later. Today's meditation, we focus on verse 29, and he said to them, this kind cannot be driven out by, by anything but prayer. I think anything that Jesus says that is this powerful deserves our attention. Prayer, in my mind, is a very interesting gift. Well, maybe interesting is not the best way to describe it. God was very ahead of his time. He gave us prayer long before we could communicate electronically to earthly peers. God was ahead of cell phones, Facebook, and even Snapchat. I still have no idea why my kids take pictures of themselves and snap it to all their friends, but they do it all the time. Any explanation of that would be helpful, and I would appreciate it. Prayer is something that I think of us, a lot of us feels hard to do. You think that only certain people can do it, and under certain circumstances. In a group setting where we always call on the pastor to lead the prayer, and it's only at church and only before meals, there seems to always be that prayer person, right? Maybe it was grandma or some other family member. We always called on them when we did the prayer. Some of us think you have to have some sort of special degree or training in order to do it. We might not feel that we're equipped, qualified, or empowered to pray. We might think the only way we can pray is in a group, when it's led by a leader, and we're praying out loud, and we bow our heads and fold our hands, which is great. There's nothing wrong with that, but it's not the only way prayer works. This past week, we as a country have been reflecting on 9-11, 20 years ago. Man, that went fast. It's been 20 years. One of my eighth grade son's teachers sent a note to parents saying that they were talking about this in class. And don't be surprised because she'd ask children to go home and talk to their parents about their um, memories of 9-11. Surprisingly enough, my son has been mute and asked us nothing, but gave me pause to reflect a little on my own. When I first heard the news, heard the news it was early in the morning. I was in my region's office. I was a hall director at the time. I had on my favorite AM talk radio show, Weber and Dolan, and they broke into the program to share that a plane had hit the World Trade Center. Well, as a historian who loves weird and interesting little trivial facts, knew that in 1945, a plane accidentally ran into the Empire State Building. It uh, had been caught in heavy fog and simply lost its way. So I assumed it had to be something like that. Some small plane hit the tower, but I would soon find out that that was not the case. I would cross campus and I would go into Steve Crook's office who had a television and we'd watch in horror of the events unfolding. I also remember how our country came together, how our churches were packed. Talk of prayer for others was through the roof. We prayed for those lost, our first responders. Prayer seemed to return to the mainstream for at least a short time, that was normal. Not unlike our text, a sense of urgency pushed us to God. In our text, it was a desperate father of a sick child. In my example, it was a national tragedy. Certainly, God is there for us in those times. But he's here all the time. There's a saying, there's no atheist in a foxhole. I'm personally not a vet. 
uh, but I'm very thankful for those who have served for us to keep America free. In our text, this father is having a foxhole moment with his son. He would do anything to make the son well. And like I mentioned at the start of this message, a parent's love is something that's hard to describe. Um, and I know that this parent would have much rather have been afflicted than his child. He would have gladly have taken his child's place. He was desperate, looking for any solution he could find. Desperately asking anyone who might be able to help, starting with the disciples who could not. Now, sorry, just because your mom did not buy you the latest iPhone this weekend does not mean your parents don't love you, okay? I have an acquaintance, a bit older, whose children are a bit older than mine. And in the time frame of one year, several years ago, three of his four children had a near-life-ending scare. It was really difficult for my friend. One was on a bike accident that was hit by a car. One nearly fell out of a treehouse, and the third suffered from severe mental health issues. Foxholes can look different, but in each, the fear pushes us to God and to prayer. Foxholes are where we seem to offer to pray for others. But do we do that when we're not in a foxhole? And when we offer this prayer, is it just a nice gesture or do we actually do it? Do we give a quick prayer, cross it off the list? Okay, I've done what I did, what I said I was going to do. We're going to make these into our daily prayers. I'm guilty of that. Another reason why prayer is so powerful is because God does answer it. How many of you can point to a time that prayer was answered in your life? Years ago, my wife was pregnant with our oldest son, and I got a message on my pager. Yes, I'm that old. It was a pager. My wife, who was a teacher at Westman High School, had been taken to the hospital from work with some pains in her stomach. I was on my way home already, and I rushed to the hospital. The trick or issue was, I didn't really know where the hospital was. We lived and still do in West Bend, and at the time, the old hospital was tucked away into a neighborhood. I knew kind of where it was, but I'd never been there. I can tell you my conversation with God on the ride home was for the safety of my wife, my unborn child, and for him to take the wheel to get me to this hospital. The story ends that I turned at the exact right place. I went exactly the right way, entered into the emergency room exactly where I would want it to go. The route was perfect. My wife and son were fine, who, by the way, is a senior in high school, and if other prayers are answered, maybe he'll join the student ranks at CUW next year. God answered my prayer that day and took the wheel. How really powerful is prayer? Martin Luther once said something to the effect that I have so much to do today, the only way I can accomplish it is to be in prayer for the first three hours of the day. In our text, Jesus says that prayer was the only solution when asked how could the disciples heal that sick boy. Think through that. He tells us the only way to heal this boy who is affected with his powerful spirit is by prayer. Let's go back to prayer as a gift, which it is. It is not, compl it is not a complicated piece of technology that will blink 12 on the clock for years. It is an open line to God that we have access to 24-7. Prayer is not just a formal setting around the table, it's everywhere. It's in the car, it's in your residence hall room, the hallways, your office, on the boat, it's everywhere. It's both in our silent private reflections as well as our group and leader-led prayer like we'll have at the end of chapel. God gave us this special prayer. Maybe you've heard of it. It's called the Lord's Prayer. It starts with our Father who art in heaven. It's a prayer we should pray, pray but it's not the only one. I think we often get discouraged with prayer because we do not always get what we're looking for or hoping for. It's not normally, it, it normally is not as obvious as the time that God took the wheel, literally. Often feels like prayer goes unanswered. Or worse, what I prayed for didn't happen. The opposite did. Why did my grandma die? Why did this relationship not work? Why am I so lonely? It's not because prayer was not working and should not keep us from praying even more. 
My friend with the children in crisis told me that he prayed more and harder in that time of trouble than any other time in his life. He prayed longer than he ever had at a single time over his child who laid in a hospital bed who was battered and banged, hooked up in cords and IVs. God answered his prayer. But I often wonder, does he still pray that hard for that son? I don't know. But I can tell you that his son needs his dad's prayer today as much as he did that night in the hospital. Still feeling like you're not sure how to really pray? Look around. Find a friend, a mentor, who can pray with and for you. Get connected with campus ministry, which is not just for LCMS students. Find one of our campus pastors. They would love to pray with and have you pray with them. Or just start the simple prayer that might start something like this. Hey God, it's Steve. Boy, I got a lot to talk to you about. I'm struggling with this college stuff. I really need some help. When I have an opportunity to give chapel, I typically try to leave with a bit of a challenge. Certainly I could say, hey, pray. That would be a good one. But I really want to remember what Pastor Smith said yesterday. Pray in a way to love our neighbors and not gossip. Build up and not tear down. All of this is good and certainly part of my big challenge, but I want to add one more part. If prayer is our smartphone to God, start the longest snap streak you can have. If you can do it with your friends, you can do it with God. Prayer works. There's no activation fees, roaming charges, just the direct path to God that he, that he gives us. Amen. We stand for prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of another day to serve you and worship you. Please bless us and be with us in the many tasks of the day and give us strength and energy and health for all the things we are called to do. Today we include special petitions for Thanksgiving with the brother of Professor Kathy Lemley who is going home after two months in the hospital with a long recovery still ahead. We pray also for Thanksgiving with the brother and sister-in-law of student Anna Falk, who had a baby after having complications with her pregnancy. Gracious Father, we look on on these your servants and give them grace and peace in their times of need. We thank you for healing and for the gift of life and pray that you would continue to give them strength and the ability to serve you all their days. Finally, gracious Father, hear our prayers again this day during this pandemic. Renew our efforts to care well for each other and continue safe practices. Bring healing to those who are sick and comfort to those who have suffered loss. Hear these and all the prayers on our hearts and in our minds as we pray in Jesus' name.